Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide today showing you how to carry out basic engine service on this 2006 Ford Focus and it's a 1.6 petrol. And it's quite a straightforward job. Obviously there is a lot of um, other things checked on the service when you send it into the garage. But I'm going to run you through the basic replacement of the oil filter, the air filter and the spark plugs. And I'll just show you the bits we're using. If you check out the description below, I'll put links to all the parts used and all the tools as well. I'll also put the torque settings and the oil quantities. No oil filter, no spark plugs, and an air filter there as well. Um, just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Now we're obviously using two poster ramp today, it does make the job a little bit easier uh, but to be honest it's not too bad to do without. All you want to be doing is just jacking it up quite high on the sills on the front, put some axle stands under it just to give you some, a decent bit of access to uh, drain the oil out. So, um, the first thing we're going to do, just pop the dipstick out, take the oil cap off uh, and when we drop the oil down we'll just allow it to flow through a bit better. So. Um, with that out now, we'll send it up in the air, we'll drop the oil out first, uh, and then we'll do the air filter, and then the spark plugs. And again, if you just check in the description below, I've also put a link to um, replacing the timing belt on the same vehicle as well. Now it's just coming underneath the vehicle from the front. You've got your sump pan here, you've got the oil filter there, it's just a spin on metal element type. And then just coming round the back of the sump, got the sump plug here and you've got a 30 mil socket to undo that so to start with we'll just undo that drain the oil out and then we'll crack the uh, crack the oil filter off and uh, just let that run let a bit of oil run out of there as well and we're going to be using an oil filter removal tool like this there's a couple of different tools you can get out there and i'll put uh, some of them in the links in the description below as well so and um, we'll just get this oil draining and run you through the next steps Just while the oil's draining, got the sump plug there, and you just see we've got a little rubber o ring seal that fits on there. And um, we just want to tap, I've got a new seal, and all you want to do is just use a little pick, a flat bladed screwdriver, just pick that seal out and swap that over. I'll just do that and then set that aside for once the oil's drained down. With the filter off, all I'm going to do with the new filter now is just smear a little bit of oil just around the seal, just make sure it goes on nicely. And you want to be doing this just as, as tight as you can by hand, really. You don't want to be too tight, so just a good knit by hand is enough. Now that we've knit the filter up, we're just going to run the sump plug in. Uh, the torque setting for the sump plug is 28 newton meters. If you're not using a torque wrench, 28 newton meters is not mega tight, just a, a reasonable nip really. So, um, but we'll do that, and then all we'll do is just wash everything off with some brake cleaner, and it just makes it really easy at the end when you're running it up. Just make sure you ain't got uh, easy just to check and make sure you ain't got any leaks. Uh, so just nip that sump plug up and wash that down quick, and we can get it back down and do the uh, air filter.
just washed all that down. I mean, this one's quite an oily engine anyway, but you can just see all the mess from the oil filters all cleaned off now. So it'll just make it really easy to see. Uh, you can see around the sun plug there as well, nice and dry now. So um, once we run it up at the end, it's just nice and easy to check, make sure it's all sealed up. So. We'll just drop it back down now, put some oil in it, and then show you changing the air filter. So now that we've dropped it back down, just going to fill the engine oil up. And these take 4.1 litres of 530 fully synthetic oil. Uh, again, if you want to check the links in the description below, there's links to the oil and where you can get it from. Also, that sump plug seal as well. Um, just get that filled up uh, and then we'll run you through checking the level. And I'll just show you on the dipstick quick, we've got a maximum and a minimum there. Uh, obviously at the minute we do need to start it and let it settle before checking it correctly. Um, I do know that the exact amount is 4.1 litres, but it's always worth before you do start it up, just have a quick dip and just check and just make sure you are roughly about in the right place. So. Just see at the minute, it's just up to the max there. We haven't had a chance, we haven't given it a chance to walk, um, we haven't given it a chance to work round into the filter or anything yet. So now that I know that it's uh, definitely got a reasonable amount in it, all I'm going to do is just put the dipstick back in. Yeah, so now that I've put it back in, I'm just going to strike the engine up now. Uh, it might just be a little bit rattly just for a couple of seconds, just while the oil works round. Um, but it generally on these floors with the oil fil filter sitting sort of horizontally onto it, they're not too bad. Um, but just leave it running for about 10 seconds and just work the oil around the system and we'll turn it off, let it settle, and we'll check the level in about five minutes. Um, so while that's doing that, we'll move on to the air filter. Um, also as well, when you do uh, strike it up, I just want to check, I'm going to show you quickly. Um, you've got the oil warning light on the dash for the pressure. Just make sure that that goes out. So, so strike it up. Look at everything, that's me. I'm not so the oil that. pressure light straight out there, but just, um, it, like just a little oil sound there. Just want to be keeping an eye on that and making sure that that goes off. So the oil's set off for five minutes now. We'll just pop the dipstick, pull the dipstick out, just give it a quick wipe off so it's nice and clean. And just re-dip it. So I've just pulled it out there. You can see it's absolutely bang on the max. I like to really get it anywhere between sort of half and max really. So we know that's bang on there. Now that that's done, we'll just go on changing the air filter. I uh, just need to take this hose clip off, or just slacken it off to pull this pipe back. And you can just use a flat bladed screwdriver or a 7 mil uh, socket on it there. And then you've got some little Torx 25s all the way around the outside, just to undo. And then we'll be able to pull the top cover off. We'll just do that quick now. Just see this one's real crudded up so quite a state that really so it's well uh, well ready for renewing you can see how thickly gummed up it is in the middle bit there so and with the air filter out next thing you want to do just always have a bit of a look in the the bottom housing for it sometimes you get a few leaves and bits of crap and stuff like that in there so just clean all that out give it a bit of a hoover out if you want and then you can just simply slot the new air filter in and just nip it back down all the torque screws holding the filter in, they just want quite a light nip really, they don't need to be too tight, so a lot of people over tighten them and damage them. got the air filter change the next thing we we'll do is the spark plugs now i'll just run you through the uh, service light reset at the end as well and the reason we haven't got a fuel filter i'm just going to double check but a lot of these fords don't actually have one it's a, it's a lifetime filter in the tank so um, but the spark plugs there's four of them situated under here 
these are the ignition leads. Um, do need to put these back in the right order, um, but obviously they're all different lengths, so it's pretty self-explanatory. You can't really go too wrong with that. But they do just clip in on the edges there. So I'm just going to pull all these up now. Just pull and put them aside, and that will reveal the spark plugs. Um, sometimes they can be a little bit tight. Just got to give them a good tug to get them out. I'll just show you some that you want to be checking on the inside of here once that's out as well. So that's the uh, plug leads out of the way. Uh, what it was that uh, I want to check, and it's actually already you can see we've sort of got the issue on this one. Um, but basically we've got um, quite a bit of oil in here. And if you've got quite a bit of oil in there, basically the rocker cover gasket which sits under here obviously seals the rocker cover top section from leak to stop it leaking oil into this uh, sort of gully down the middle. Um, so if you've got oil in there it's and your rocker covers leaking so you're going to need a rocker cover gasket as well. Um, but the other thing, a little cap that you can just see in the middle through there, that's the coil plug and there's another one that side as well. Another really common issue is you might take this out and find it full of red rust in there. Uh, you might even have a bit of water or antifreeze in there. Uh, what that is is the core plugs fail and leak coolant into the gully way as well. So, and if that's the case, you need to renew the core plugs. So, uh, we put on a video on in the future uh, of how to replace them core plugs because it's a really common issue. So, um, just for now, get the spark plug socket out and we'll uh, pull all the spark plugs out and just undo them. Um, if there is a lot of oil in there, you just want to be careful, you don't really want to pull them plugs out and drop the oil in the engine. So either just it's a little bit tricky, but you might have to get like a bit of rag or tissue in there, try and uh, wipe as much oil as you can out. But there's only a little bit of a dribble in there, so it's not too bad for me today. So I'm just going to undo all them now and then we'll swap them over and run you through the torque setting as well. A proper spark plug socket there. I've put a link in the description below to them. It's just they've got a rubber in there that grabs the plug as you undo it to pull it out, so it makes it nice and easy. So yeah, much oil's in there, the state of the spark plug. So, um, I haven't actually got a video doing the rocker cover gasket yet. I'll put one in the future, but if you do check out the cam belt video that I've done on the same engine, it pretty much shows you removing the rocker cover on this because you need to take it off to set the timing marks at the back. So, um, but yeah, there's a link, I'll put a link above and there's a link in the description below to that as well. All I'll do now is just run all the, all, all the new spark plugs in lightly. Uh, the correct torque setting is 15 newton meters. If you, haven't, if you haven't got a torque wrench, 15 newton meters isn't too much really, it's just a light, just a little bit more than a light nip. So we'll nip all them up, torque them up correctly, and then we can refit the leads. So I was just using the impact driver there just to run them in, which if you're not massively confident with using one, isn't really advisable. Um, but I was just literally using it just to lightly spin it in and making sure that it wasn't actually using any impact force to, to hammer it. So just, just a quick and bit quick and easier just to uh, gently run them up. So that's all the plug leads back on and just see we just clip them nicely into there um, but see that's the main filters replaced see not too bad a job really i uh, thought i'd share it in case anyone wants to have a go at theirs uh, just while you're under the bonnet it's always worth just checking your coolant level just making sure that's set right you've got a brake, your brake fluid level there just check that that's set between the min and the max and then you've got your power steering level there as well. You can see that's got a min and a max, and it does say it's to be checked when it's cold, because some, some power steering levels you should check when it's hot. 
And with that, that's done. We'll just go show you how to reset the service light. Really straightforward service light reset on these Fords. Uh, this one's actually quite basic. I don't think this probably won't have one, but I'll just run you through the procedure. It's the same on pretty much all the Fords. So we've just started with the ignition off. Turn the ignition on, stage two. We get the lights on there. Simply press and hold the accelerator and the brake at the same time. You want to keep the pedals depressed for about 30 seconds at most. And then if it's got a service light, it'll either flash up, say it's done. Some of the transits have a like an orange spanner warning that will go, or um, but it might not, might just not say anything, but it'll clear the light. So, so I don't think this has actually got one. So I'll just keep it depressed, just in case. Okay, we'll turn that off. And now that that's done, all I'm going to do now is just start it up. I'm just going to leave it running. Um, I'll send it up in the air, have a good look round underneath, make sure there's no leaks. Um, we'll just have a quick look, just make sure I haven't got the fuel filter as well. And I'll just show you where it would be located if it has got one. So it's nice and dry around the oil filter there. Same around the sump plug as well. And just come into the back, we've got the fuel tank here. Um, if you've got a fuel filter on it, they're normally located around this area here, this area here and it'll be an inline filter. So you can see the two pipes coming off the tank and just straight into the main lines down the body there. So I haven't got a fuel filter on this one. Um, sometimes some models do have them located a bit further back, but just have a good look around the fuel tank and you'll know if it's got one or not. So. Yeah, that's the basic engine service carried out. And I uh, hope the video helped, and if you like it, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.